Barbie is perhaps the most hyped movie of the summer, and is certainly the most polarizing. On one hand, you have some critics calling it the greatest feminist critique since Pride and Prejudice, and on the other hand, you have others saying it's the most misandrist, vile piece of Hollywood garbage that seeks to further the agenda of pussy-whipping men. Though I sympathize with the latter, I wouldn't bring myself to call it an entirely bad movie. If you were to put a gun to my head and ask me what movie I would compare it to most, I would say Clerks 2. Well, listen to you telling me I can't do something because of the color of my skin? The moments that are trying to entertain the audience are, shock of all shocks, entertaining. But the moments where it tries to have a message and tries to be serious, it's kind of like a kid shaking around the talking stick furiously in the air, wanting attention. I'll try and save most of the politics for later in the video, but it's impossible since it's literally a plot point. If you have a problem with buzzwords being slung around like lollipops and a white man, then you're going to get a migraine by the end of this movie. Watching this in the theater definitely helped with the experience. Made me glad I'm not the only one to laugh at wheelchair Barbie and gender-neutral restroom logos slowly turning into black suns. Note that this review is going to contain spoilers as well as take a lot of jokes out of the movie that made it significantly more enjoyable. The story follows the stereotypical Barbie girl in Barbie world, learning about things such as existentialism and depression as she gets cellulite. She seeks to cure these ailments, but has to go to the real world and help the person playing with her, since her situation is reflective of the mood of the person playing with her, which is why weird Barbie always has her legs spread, with crayon scribbles on her face. Damn, I guess Hot Wheels wasn't just there for representation. You know what they say, once you go black, you gonna need a wheelchair. <laughs> Hey, Latrell. I had a great time last night. Barbie arrives at the real world at San Monica Pier before being arrested for self-defense. That, combined with there being no repercussions for them shoplifting, is an accurate portrayal of California law. Barbie meets her creator where she learns to cry, while Ken realizes that men are not treated as second-class citizens in the real world in comparison to Barbie land, where they are propertyless entities who are only allowed to find gratification in a woman's acknowledgement. Ken learns more and more about the idea of patriarchy when getting interested in more personal hobbies, like horses and automobiles. Stereotypical Barbie ends up being captured by Mattel, who wants her to go inside the box to fix her problem, before she refuses and runs away from Lord Business. She's saved by a single slash remarried mom who drew a design for her Barbie called Constant Thoughts About Death Barbie, along with a whole slew of unhappy meal toy ideas, which ended up seeping into stereotypical Barbie's personality. Barbie and Gloria go back to the Barbie world to see that Ken has introduced the rest of the Kens and the Barbies to patriarchy, a concept that all of them are enthused by and seemingly go along with, with most of the Barbies being eager to put on a maid outfit. Ken airs out all his grievances about Barbie World after having taken over stereotypical Barbie's house. The Barbies get all the praise in the world while the Kens are homeless and codependent by nature. Ken breaks up with stereotypical Barbie, leaving Mom to drive 2011 to the weird Barbie's dream house, which is implied to be a byproduct of the mom playing too rough with one of her dolls as a child. In the house, we meet a bunch of discontinued Barbies, all of which Gloria recognizes. She then goes on a big tirade about how women are expected to be everything and nothing at once in a speech that's just a worse version of MLK Jr.'s speech in the boondocks. And you don't want to be a nigger, cause niggers are living contradictions. Niggas are full of unfulfilled ambitions. Niggas wax and wane. Niggas love to complain. Niggas love to hear themselves talk but hate to explain. Luckily, they find out the speech was able to supposedly unbrainwash the Nobel Prize winning Barbie, so they try kidnapping all the Barbies by acting incompetent and pretending to care about the things that Ken does. Eventually, this leads to the stereotypical Barbie getting back with the stereotypical Ken. However, this is just a ploy to get the Kens to go to war with each other. The Kens briefly go to war before realizing that they have the exact same struggles, but it's too late because the Barbies rewrote the constitution of Barbie world, making Kens the Shudras of the cast once again. Ken apologizes to Barbie and says, To be honest, Honest, when I found the patriarchy wasn't about horses, I lost interest anyway. If you're wondering why I dubbed over that line, I actually didn't. He's just literally me. I neglected to spread it out through the synopsis like it's spread out in the movie, but the ghost of Barbie's creator is constantly telling her about what it's like to be human, and reminding her that she helps people through tough times and inspires them to be better. She ends up choosing the normal life, a la whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, and the movie ends on her seeing a gynecologist, presumably to get a neo-vagina. In all honesty, the biggest disappointment of the movie is them not showing the bald flesh nub that all of these characters presumably have. Alright, plot synopsis over, time to tear into the world building first. 
The movie is very wishy-washy over whether each Barbie is an individual Barbie or just a concept for the specific type. Like, there's at least a few thousand inflatable breast Barbies, but we only see one. Not to mention the millions of stereotypical Barbies that would exist. This is confusing since there should be repeats of the exact same Barbie. Later on, we see Barbie World is able to affect the real world when Ken takes over Barbie's house, resulting in Mattel producing his Mojo Doja Casa house. Not to mention if that were the case, then the ending implies that Mattel is going to be producing Barbies with realistic vaginas. It's really confusing why one person's actions and emotions are affecting the entire concept of stereotypical Barbie. I'm lazy as hell, so MatPat probably beat me to it, but I think that this means that the Barbie world, and possibly the events of the entire movie, are fabricated entirely in the mom's head. In the movie, we see that her sketches reflect the current status of stereotypical Barbie, ones which she drew when Barbie was in the real world and affecting Barbie's real world self. Not to mention, the inflatable breast Barbie wouldn't have as much articulation. Another point that supports this is that she has encyclopedic knowledge of every Barbie in the Barbie world. She admits to not knowing anything about Ken, but the Kens are shown to hold the exact same position as each other while being treated like trash and having, again, no property. Something eerily reflective of what she finds befitting for Ken. The idea of Barbie being brainwashed by the Kens despite there being zero scenes of resistance from those Barbies who went along with the system, with some of them even willing to admit to going along with it, makes it just kinda weird. They were already in control of the government, leaving no room for Ken youth to be enacted. Have some of them even say that it is consensual, contextualizing the mom's speeches as a form of brainwashing, even if it's called the exact opposite in the dialogue. Usher, Michael Jackson is not a genre of music! A visual gag about the Barbie world is that its resources there are non-existent. They drink air and the only food for them to eat is a toast at the beginning of the movie. This means that the matriarchies can only exist in worlds that lack a need for resources, implying that, under a matriarchy, we would all dehydrate and or starve to death. So an analysis of this movie says that men are the only people you can rely on to get resources. Now's as good a time as any to get into the characters. The plot of the movie has stereotypical Barbie as the main character, rejecting her role as a paragon of female beauty, versatility, and accomplishment, while taking on the role of a shitty normal woman. This is a trend we've seen with a lot of heroes and characters from old IPs being adapted. Instead of the changes happening around the character and having them face those challenges with their perspective on the matter, writers build an Ayn Rand strawman of their personas by having them shatter immediately or being portrayed as unequivocally wrong. Barbie, though seemingly going in that direction, actually fights against it by saying that these characters who are just shallow self-inserts of the writers should be kept in the real world instead of in the media, as evidenced by Barbie staying in the real world being seen as a good thing. I feel as though I've talked through boring stuff for enough. Now on to Ken. The way that Ken gets introduced to the patriarchy is through hobbies that interest him, like cars and horses. Going as far to say that he had no interest in politics when he learned that it wasn't about horses. The Kens just want to have fun, pursuing hobbies that interest them and are only looped into politics because of how politicized their interests have gotten. Similarly, in our world, gaming has frequently gotten politicized and said to incite terrorism and support sexism. The reason why the Kens are able to so easily be distracted by the Barbies is because they're talking about things that the Kens like, such as the Godfather and Photoshop. The Kens believe that they are being helpful or insightful by talking about these things, despite the fact that the Barbies are outright ignoring them. They're at their happiest when they're doing their hobbies. The Barbies are posers, merely grifting off of the Kens' culture in order to subvert it and crush them. Had the Kens gate kept more proficiently, the Barbies would have never subverted their culture and they would still have their rights. This idea of ingraining oneself in the culture before subverting it is what I think is the greatest takeaway that anybody can have from this movie. The right-wing media, instead of embracing Barbie and saying that it is good because it supports their ideas of the world, just decides to dismiss it as bad outright instead of giving any more nuance or thought into it. The greatest example of reviewers being dismissive is the view that most people have on Barbie's idea of motherhood. If you watch somebody like The Critical Drinker or Ben Shapiro, they would say that it portrays motherhood as a bad thing. But if you've watched the movie, then you would know that it portrays it as a good thing that should be encouraged. At the end of the movie, the mom gets back with her partner so that they can raise their daughter together. On top of that, Barbie goes to a gynecologist, presumably to become a real woman and be able to birth children. What some people might say as a counter to this is that a lot of people are posting Ken memes on Twitter. And though that is true, it is only in right-wing Twitter that those Ken memes are posted and popular in. It is only in that space in which the jokes are understood. And the central thesis of it isn't really being spread to anybody who didn't already believe that. 
If you find this duplicitous, then you're either not fit to be a parent, or you haven't witnessed any of the children's media coming out within the last decade. Speaking of parents, my parents thought I was gay for wanting to watch the Barbie movie, so I had to fuck my cousin in front of them to prove to them I'm not. As always, thank you for listening to my coming out story as a semi-bisexual necrophile.